Good day, this is Carrie with another tricky level Sudoku tutorial. Much like I did in my previous video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a topic which I covered in an earlier video, but I'll dig a little bit deeper into it and find some scenarios which may require us to squeeze a little bit more logic out of those strategies. Specifically, I'm going to take a closer look at row clues and column clues. And just a recap for those who have not yet watched that video, uh, these row clues and column clues are the small number numbers that you see at the margins of each 3x3 three three box. And what they represent is they should fall beside either the row or column that a number is going to be inserted in in cases where we don't know which cell it goes in, but we can at least pin it down to a row or a column. So for example, this 8 right here. Uh, it is going to go in the top row there because in that 3x3 three three box all of the cells in the third row are already filled whereas an 8 is uh, already present in the second row therefore I know that the 8 is going to go in that first row there. And to set the stage I will first mark this matching triple here. The last three numbers to go in that box are a 4, 5, and 8, all in the same column. We can't solve them yet, but we can at least show that those will be the three numbers in some order. So I'll at least mark those three numbers as column clues. And this will come in handy in a second, but first I'm actually going to look at the lower part of the puzzle. I'm going to scan the 8 to the left, and I notice that the 8 must go in the second row, because that is the only one that has blank still remaining. And we can, we can extend that to over to the right-hand side, and we should see that an 8 is going to go in the top row on the lower right-hand box. So that gives us two choices where to place the 8 in that 3x3 three three box. However, one of the choices falls right below the matching triple, which contains an 8. And if I scan the 8 over into that 3x3 three three box, I notice that I have only one place to put the 8. And the key takeaway there is because I know in the box above it where which column the 8 goes, I don't actually have to place the 8 inside that box to know that I can eliminate the left cell. Uh, regardless of where the 8 is, that cell is going to be eliminated and I can place the 8 in the rightmost cell. Now that we've placed that 8, we can look at the top right hand box beside our other column clue of 8 and we should be able to see that the 8 must go into that middle column. And we may as well complete that column by inserting the 7 in the one blank cell. And we can repeat this strategy uh, by scanning the other digits in the matching triple. I'm going to scan the 4 down into the lower right hand box and I notice that only one cell is available for us to place the 4 in that box. So I'm going to switch over to a different puzzle to give you a different demonstration. I'm fairly well right at the beginning. I've just scanned a few numbers and now I'm on the 4s. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the lower center box and I can see that the 4 will go in the middle column, one of those two cells, so I can place a column clue there. That also means I can place a column clue in the box above it, which will go in the right hand column. But since two of the rows already have a 4, I know that the 4 must go in the lower row, so I'll place the 4 there. And now I'm going to do a scan on the 5s, and I will see that the 5 must also go in the middle column in that box, so I'll place another column clue there. So now I have two column clues to fit inside three cells, but if I look at the second row, they already have a 4 and they already have a 5, so I can eliminate that center cell from consideration in terms of where I place the 4 and the 5 in that column. And what that's going to allow me to do is to reduce that problem into two clues for two cells. And in the matching pair that I just formed that will have a 4 and a 5 in some order, that's going to eliminate two possibilities for where the 7 can go in that box. And if I do a scan on the 7, that leaves me with only one cell to place it. It's going to go in the lower left hand cell. Uh, an additional jigsaw step now is going to allow me to lock the three numbers in that center row to 1, 2, and 3. 
And now I can make a couple solves in the lower left hand box. I'm going to start with the three because I think that's a little bit easier to see. I have two threes now. I actually have a three and then a matching triple which contains a three. So that's going to force the three into the upper cell. And the matching triple will interact with the column clue of one in the left box. And that's going to allow me to place the one in the lower cell. So that will wrap things up for this lesson. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and hopefully you're able to make some additional headway with these strategies. I thank you for watching. Catch you later.